So we have had a detailed discussion about G protein coupled receptors, G proteins and different types of ligands that they interact with. Now let's see how we can use this information clinically and uh, for the benefit of people. Let me first of all tell you about different types of epinephrine receptors. There are about nine different types of epinephrine receptors on different types of cells. Beta 1, for example, are on heart cells. Beta 2 are on lung cells. They are coupled to GS, G stimulatory proteins, which activate adrenal cyclase. Alpha 1 and alpha 2 receptors are coupled to two other G proteins, GQ and GI. As I mentioned earlier, GQ proteins activate phospholipase C and GI basically inhibits adrenal cyclase. Epinephrine bound to alpha 2 receptors causes arteries to constrict, cutting off circulation to the blood vessels in the intestinal tract, skin and kidneys, the peripheral organs. This epinephrine release also restricts the blood supply to non-essential organs. This epinephrine is released as I said in response to stress. So it is the fight or flight hormone. So once an animal is in danger, the entire cellular or machinery is geared to providing extra strength to the animal or the human being or to, for it to either run away from the predator or to be able to fight the predator. For example, when a mouse sees a cat, adrenaline is released, it will have more blood available to the muscles that because the peripheral organ supply has been cut. It will have, blood will have more oxygen because lungs, smooth muscles in the lungs have relaxed and more air can be taken in. The liver is releasing more glucose, the fuel for the muscle cells to burn and do their job. So, and heart is pumping more blood into the muscles because the rate of contraction for heart has been increased. So this is all well and good. But what about people who have a weak heart? So if they have a disturbance, if they are stressed, their heart is already, function is already compromised. So if they are subjected to stress, it can be catastrophic for their heart. So what do you do? Now let me introduce you to antagonist. Their structure is sort of like the ligand, the natural ligand. They bind the receptor. However, they do not allow receptor to go through the conformational change. So for example, people with heart disease are put on beta blockers because beta blockers will bind the epinephrine receptors on the surface of heart muscle cells. So these heart muscle cells, even if the epinephrine is released, epinephrine will not be able to bind these receptors and cause heart to have high rate of contraction. Remember, we don't want to stress the heart. So antagonists are molecules that can bind the receptor. However, they do not have conformational change in the receptor. Receptor is taken up by these molecules, so it cannot bind its natural ligand, preventing the conformational chain of the receptor, thereby blocking the signaling system. Agonists, on the other hand, they are like the natural ligand. They can bind the receptor. These are artificially produced ligands, if you want to, for the sake of simplicity. Let's put it that way. So these agonists, for example, terbutalin, when it is given to patients who have asthma, it can bind the respective epinephrine receptor, causing the smooth muscle relaxation, allowing more air to come in. So these terbutalin basically binds the only those receptors which are present on the surface of lung muscle cells and not the heart cells. So this is how we can selectively choose which receptor to activate and which to block. That's what this information, this knowledge about signaling system allows us to do. Let me introduce you to another molecule, tamoxifen. It is both an antagonist and agonist. It is an antagonist of estrogen. It's a hormone in the breast tissue. So women who have breast cancer, because the number of receptors on their breast tissue has increased or for whatever reason, these women are given higher doses of tamoxifen. So tamoxifen goes and binds these receptors and prevents this receptor from going through a conformational change and giving a signal to the cell. This binding of tamoxifen prevents binding of its natural ligand, estrogen, to this receptor. 
if estrogen bound to this receptor, the receptor will become activated and give the signal to the cells to divide. So tamoxifen is preventing that. Tamoxifen acts as agonist in the uterine tissue. So a lower dose of tamoxifen is given to patients who have a fertility issue. So basically it mimics the effects of estrogen and causes the maturation of uterus for implantation of embryo. So as an agonist for fertility purposes, the generally the dose is 10 to 40 milligrams of tamoxifen, whereas when it is acting as antagonist, it is much higher. So we have seen an example of a remarkable drug which acts as agonist and antagonist in different tissues. So signaling system, as I told you at the very beginning, is one of the major targets for many pharmaceutical drugs.